Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, this is the second um, series for this month of September. And I'd like to thank everyone who's been following since August. Uh, for September, we'll be doing um, episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. And so um, we hope that you could continue to follow the Facebook page for the upcoming events. Um, I trust that everyone has read the house rules, but I just like to remind everyone that you may type your questions in the Q&A box or on FB Live. Um, those questions will be entertained at the end of the presentation. And so just make sure that if you have any questions to type them in the Q&A box on Zoom, if you're in Zoom, or on FB Live. Now, this evening, we have with us um, a speaker who will be refuting the 10-point presentation of Lupad Dumaguete on the 174-hectare reclamation project. He is engineer Wilfredo Magaliano. And before I welcome him, I would like to share um, engineer Wilfredo Magaliano's credentials. He has been the head technical assistant of the Negros Power Grid National Power Corporation in Dumaguete. He has been the administration manager of NPC Visayas operations in Cebu. He has been the manager of the Regional Management Services Department of NPC Visayas Operations and Maintenance in Cebu. He has been the Visayas Region Administrator, DOE Fund on ER194. Uh, this is the Environment Electrification and Livelihood Program. He has been the head of, technic of the Technical Working Group Power Sector Metro Cebu Master Plan Project. He has been the country manager of um, Philippines ProGen Limited New Zealand, the general manager of AllGen Corp Philippines and is now a director since 2016. He is the executive director of the Diocesan Electri Electoral Board of the Diocese of Dumaguete, a member of the Diocese of Dumaguete Finance Committee, and Chairman, Environment Committee, Negros Oriental Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So, sir, Engineer Magaliano, welcome. Thank you very much, Attorney Zara. Yes, here I am. Yeah, we'd like to start immediately. Good evening, everybody uh, from the Magaliano. I am Fred Magaliano. So, we'd like to start our presentation. Uh, refuting this 10 point presentation of Lupad de Magete on the 174 hectares uh, reclamation project. Okay, so we go ahead. We start with what the scriptures say in Psalm 127, verse 1 Unless the Lord build the house, they who build shall labor in vain. Unless the Lord guard the city, in vain does the guard keep vigil. And we proceed to another scripture in the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, it says, Anyone who hears my words and puts them into practice is like the wise man who, build, who built his house on rock. When the rainy season set in, the torrents came and the winds blew and buffeted his house. It did not collapse. It had been solidly set on rock. Anyone who hears my words but does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on sun. The rains fell, the torrents came, the winds blew, and last against his house. It collapsed under all this and was completely ruined. Now, this is the slide of that uh, post by Lupado Magetti in August 23 regarding the proposed smart city project. And they said that it will help realize the aspiration of the city to build a livable 
and prosperous democracy for all. So this post came after uh, Mayor Remolio, Mayor Antonio, Felipe Antonio Remolio, had a meeting with various different uh, pastors of various denominations in the city. And so he was presenting, in fact, to these uh, pastors to take sides with him, of course. And we know that uh, the Catholic Church, I think the UCCP and other churches, the mainline churches, have opposed this project. Next slide, please. And so these are the points that uh, they have presented. The construction of water, uh, wastewater treatment facilities complete with sewage treatment plant and diversion piping system, lift station for the release of cleaner water with less impact on the environment. Now, these are the things that we are going to refute tonight. That's number one. So later we'll have number two, number three, number four, number five, up to number uh, to number 10. And let's see. So at the end, it says that Mayor Remolio pledged to consider and bring the attention of the Philippine Reclamation Authority and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. The concerns of those opposing the proposed smart city project and those gathered in the series of information, information tribe. So the proposal will be duly evaluated in the proper forum and final decision of the appropriate agencies will be reached. So here's a photo, several photos of that uh, forum with the mayor and the pastors. And so we'll start with our presentation. Our points. <clears throat> now, who would not want progress and development? We say that only the fools, the laggards, would choose to stay behind and constantly hope to hit a jackpot. Just like the proverb, proverb, proverbial uh, one de la cross waiting for the guava to fall into his mouth. No, it's not like that. We are not like that. We want progress, and we want development. But let us be sure, what, at what cost or price are we willing to gamble to attain progress and development? That's the question. Is it for the price of immorality, damaged culture, environmental rape of resources, loss of strategic security and legal recklessness? This we need to discuss now, point by point. So number one, it says that construction of wastewater facilities, treatment facilities, complete with a sewage treatment plant and diversion piping system, lift station for the release of cleaner water with less impact to the environment. Okay, this is clear that these two wastewater treatment facilities will be built and installed at the proposed islands. These are not going to treat the wastewater of Milan Domagetti. I'd like to get my, anyway. Yes. Uh, for a while, I'll, I'll get my, we see notes on this other side, excuse me. So that's for number one. It's about the wastewater treatment for the Maguete. But it, actually it's not for the Maguete, it is for, for the islands that they are going to build. Now let me proceed that. The Maguete City, as it is, will not benefit from these facilities. Only the locators, residents, establishments at the 174 hectares islands will make use of this. The way it looks, there will be two artificial islands that will, be, that will rise from the sea as a result of this so-called reclamation project. 
therefore, one wastewater treatment facility to each artificial island. Hence, there will be two facilities that will be constructed and installed. These are not Fort Domogeti at all. This is making the people believe that the facilities will be for Domogeti. Let's proceed to number two. Building of hybrid solar wind power station to collect and generate renewable energy. So this is for the islands. Now, our argument is there is no feasibility study presented, even for a pre-feasibility study nor a concept paper. There's none. So, ano to? Suntok sa buwan? We will never know how the two artificial islands will get the bulk of their power supply. And by all likelihood, they will still draw from the existing grid of the NGCP and Noriko too. To make the people believe that hybrid solar and wind power sources in the, in the artificial islands will provide much electricity creates false hope that the two islands will be self-sufficient in its power supply. This is not backed by science and technology at present. We don't know. We don't have a feasibility study. What is the projected power demand of the two artificial islands from its early development to full development? There's no answer. There are no figures. The concept as presented is shooting from the hips. Now let's take solar. Of course, they will not put up a solar farm. That will be a waste of reclaimed land being converted into solar farm. The most they can do will be rooftop solar and maybe the outside walls of the buildings. And that's common here in Domogeti right now. There's no need to mention this for this project because it's existing in Domogeti at present. So many buildings, so many institutions, for example, Foundation University, Silliman University, uh, Robinsons, and other, other commercial buildings already are uh, powered by solar. But you know, the recent from recent technologies of solar farming, if they do that, it's, uh, it's one hectare equals one megawatt. And then the availability factor is only 14%, 14 to 16%. That's because harvesting solar power at its optimum efficiency will only be available from 9.30 in the morning to about 3.30 in the afternoon. That's on a clear sunny day. Rooftop solar owners can attest what will happen during cloudy and rainy days. So let's be clear that at the industrial commercial level, solar power source will be out from four o'clock in the afternoon to the next day, nine o'clock in the morning of the next day. Therefore, there is still a need to connect to, connect to the grid and interconnect with the solar, for example, in their buildings. So there, there's no news. There's no, there's no uh, development as far as the RECO or NGCP is concerned. We don't know. There's no feasibility study. Now let's go to wind power. Now this is something which is a little bit, you know, funny because first things first, the Mogete area and its neighboring towns are not identified nor featured in the wind energy map of the Philippines, meaning it's not yet considered as a potential for wind power development. To be considered as a candidate site for wind power or wind power development, there must be a consistent airflow of about 10 kilometers per hour. And to know this and obtain, obtain this data, it will take some five to six years of data gathering and studies. It takes time. The wind, the wind direction is not constant year long and so forth. And, and, and the next season, it's different. It could be 30 kilometers away or 20 kilometers away from where you are, you are taking the studies now. So 
the the power sourcing here is you know vague, vague because of the absence of the feasibility studies. So we proceed to issue number three to to the slide on five G. Now, okay. 5G ready underground cable to host more ICT companies and investments. And they said no more overhanging cable wires or electric wires in Dumaguete. So that's not Dumaguete. No more overhanging cables and electric wires. This is not, this is for artificial islands not for the Maguete, as you can see today. And we have these photos of cables, the spag black spaghetti around the Maguete, not just in the population. It's all over. So and this is this is not part to clean this up, it's not part of the uh, 23 billion peso project. Far from it. So mainland Dumaguete will continue to have this wire pollution along the streets with all those wires from telecom, tele, uh, telecommunication companies and of course from the electric uh, distribution wires. All of this will grow worse in the future to clear the overhanging cables and wires is not part of the 23 billion peso plan to clear the cables and wires along the streets of the population and the barangays is a false promise this is designed to entice the people into believing that it will be for them no this is for the locators and establishments in the artificial islands so stop dreaming that this will happen to dear old domogeti by way of their smart city project now let's go to number four. Establish geriatric healthcare facilities. Dumaguete is one of the best places to retire in the Philippines. Lupad said so. Now we put up this argument because this is for uh, elderly, these are for old people. Retirees, of course, need health care facilities to where they want to spend their time. They want to be nearer to hospitals because getting old, as most retirees are, need to locate close to medical and health facilities. But most retirees don't like to be housed in high-rise condos. They would prefer to settle in laid back areas free from pollution, traffic and noise. Old folks and retirees want to live by the bay here in the Maguete, in the beach area, to enjoy the cool sea breeze and frolic on the early morning sun. They don't want to go to the beach where their site is blocked by an artificial island some 30 or 50 meters away. And those in inhabitants there live in high rise condos across. Now let's talk about additional hospital or geriatric for all the folks health center here. This can be built here in the Mogeti if really desired by the LGU. And if they want to. There is no point for old folks and retirees to who reside in mainland Dumaguete or neighboring towns to cross to the artificial islands to avail of this hospital and health care facilities there. This is another attempt to instill false hope to the people of Dumaguete, especially the elderly. This promised geriatric health care facilities 
are not the Magitenos, are not for the Magitenos or retirees over here. These are for the affluent residents and occupants of the artificial islands. So let's proceed to number five. According to Lupad, construction of major sports facilities for national and international events where Dumaguete City was recognized as sports organizer of the year in the entire Philippines for three straight years. Okay, our comment here is that uh, despite all the odds, no, this Ms. Dumaguete had been had never been wanting in trying to develop sports enthusiasm and recognition despite its present capabilities. Dumaguete and Negros Oriental have so far hosted successfully national level sports events. To dream big to host a regional or ASEAN or international grade sports activities is another story. Now we're not saying that we don't want it. Now what really is the plan of the city government? Is that an urgent issue for now while we are still battling the COVID-19 pandemic? Are we to learn yet from what happened to the Tokyo Olympics? Postponed for another year and, you know, with the audience far below their expectation. Anyway, do we really need to come up with two artificial islands in order to become a viable host for national and international sports events? Or is it very necessary now? And over for over the, the, the next four or six years, the real issue is the prioritization and urgency of projects vis-a-vis -vis the current health situation of the local community. Number six, construction of wide and durable roads to improve safety and convenience when traveling. So no debate here. This is, this is obviously not for the Maguete. It is for the artificial islands. Building the artificial islands will not make the roads in the Maguete wider. So strike this out as a plan for their old the Maguete. The so-called wide and durable roads in the artificial islands will not ease the traffic and improve the safety in mainland Dumaguete. Let's move to number seven. Provision of more open spaces, or green spaces for the enjoyment of the public. This remains to be seen. More open and green spaces in the artificial islands may not be accessible anytime by mainland Dumaguete folks. The public they are talking about are not, are the affluent occupants or the residents of the so-called artificial islands. Dumaguete and the surrounding towns and all over the towns and cities of Negros Oriental have so much natural gifts of open and green spaces to offer and to be further developed. These beautiful spaces are waiting to be acknowledged, developed and promoted. They are just right here now, from the sea to the mountains, from the mountains to the sea. Take a look at Burakai and Bohol models. It's all because of the naturalness of those places not the artificiality, natural beauty, not the manufactured artificial beauty. Let's proceed to number eight. Creation of more economic growth centers. This is very vague. For host economic growth, this one remains to be seen. In all likelihood, this may not be for Filipinos. I'm not against the Chinese, 
but they say the Chinese component in this equation is more likely to dominate in the so-called economic growth. Check on the data where the, the Chinese are occupying newly opened growth centers in Luzon and other parts of the world. In Colom Colombo, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, etc. The locals are likely just overwhelmed by the presence and the economic activities of these new inhabitants. Now let's check what happened to Kawit Kaviti, which becomes a Pogo center, estimated to have some 10,000 to 20,000 Chinese nationals there. And you know what happened? Read the papers, check the news. But what is the most basic? What will the islands offer to boost the economy? Trading, universal or international banking, IT services, retailing, malls, condos, hotels, gambling casinos, to which the Chinese are so prominent, tourism, and what? We are not sure. But for sure, there is no local industrial and manufacturing backbone in the Mugeti that shall warrant putting up headquarters or offices for the non-existent industries and manufacturing. These two must be from mainland Domagueti and Negros Oriental. These are the main economic drivers or activities that prevent worker migration and brain drain. If these industrial and manufacturing activities are present in the city and or the province, then it will greatly benefit the Mugeti and Negros Oriental or to us Filipinos. If not, then the foreign occupants in the islands will dominate the so-called economic growth to their favor. Question, can we draw back a skilled pipe fitter now working in the Middle East to come home and work at the artificial islands for good? For those engineers and other workers there in Saudi Arabia, so on, to come home? No, not yet. There's no industry to back up that island. Now, the great industrial revolution in the West happened because of massive manufacturing and other heavy, medium, and even light industries. Japan and Germany, both losers during World War II, had no choice but speed up manufacturing and industrialization, light to medium to heavy in order to recover and create plenty of jobs for its people. The economy is not driven by office work or by building artificial islands. Now here is this old adage. I'm sorry for those uh, who don't understand Cebuano. Uh, we're trying to reach uh, the, you know, the masses. I'm going to speak in Cebuano, it's something like this. Uh, the old people, ang, ang mga karaan nag-ingon, ang kinaya sa Pinoy, mga Pilipino maone, kung na ay magmaruya dire, magmaruya po dito ang silingan. Kung na ay magsyakoy dire, magsyakoy po dito, pikas. Kung magtusino dire, magtusino po ang silingan. And so, kay nagreklamation man ang Manila, Cebu o Bacolod, magreklamation po ta dire. The Domagueti administration is not considering what to put into operation in these reclaimed artificial islands. No clear plans, except the so-called dividing or sharing the area among the national government, the local government, and the contractor, A.M. Cuerpo, the dummy of the Chinese Poli Changda. 23 billion pesos is only for reclaiming the sea to put up the artificial islands. And so what's next? How much money will you need to develop the city government's share into wastewater treatment facilities, 
green and open spaces, sports complex facilities, etc. Number nine, provide more job opportunities and prevent brain drain. Now this is partially answered in item number eight. This is an icing on the cake that they want to make people believe that economic prosperity comes right after a reclamation project. Is it happening right away in Manila and Cebu? In the reclamation projects and sites? There's a maturization or curing or gestation period before you can build high-rise buildings and it takes years. This should be incorporated in the feasibility study. But to promise the people of some kind of mana from heaven that all your heartaches, all your joblessness, brain drain, health concerns, economics will be solved presto by those artificial islands. Stop dreaming. Despite the commercial and the, the manufacturing backup in Metro Manila, for example, because of the export processing zones in Laguna, Cavite, etc., and in Cebu, in the MEPS or the Mactan Export Processing Zone, Naga, Mandawi, San Fernando, etc., the reclamation project started making revenues 10 to 15 years later. Again, do we have our version of commercial? an industrial backup to speak about. We can refer this partly again, item number eight, our, our discussions on uh, item number eight. It's not a guarantee that you can provide more opportunities and prevent brain drain. Now, Number 10, well, of course, if it's developed, they say that it is additional sources of revenues for the local government to provide more basic social services. And so Mayor Remolio pleads to consider and bring to the attention of the Philippine Reclamation Authority and the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the concerns of those opposing the proposed smart city project and those gathered in the series of information drive. So the proposal will be duly evaluated in the proper forum and final decision of the appropriate agencies will be reached. Now, we have this massive and frantic information campaign going on because they failed to, do, to hold consultations in the first place in Cebuano, the Balit Adne, it's now the cart pulling the carabao. In the wake of this information campaign, are massive damages of polarization among the people of the Maguete and nearby towns of Nicros Oriental. Thanks and no thanks to the so-called smart city project. We, the Maguetenos, are now so deeply divided than ever before. Is this the way of building up a smart, smart relationship among the city of gentle people? Now, may we ask, may I ask, how did you come up with the project price tag of 23 billion pesos since you don't have yet a feasibility study? This figure can only be determined if you have that feasibility study. What's the basis of your computation or calculation? Who made the calculations? You or Cuerpo or Polichanda? And so please enlighten us. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for that uh, very clear point by point rebuttal of the uh, 10 points that was presented, Engineer Fred. Um, from what you've presented, it seems like um, the points that were uh, presented to the public uh, will not benefit the mainland Dumaguete or um, does not have enough data to show whether or not um, what the plans are, are feasible. So um, it's good to have this laid out um, so that the people can see side by side. And we'd like to thank you for doing that. Um, now, this evening, we have some questions from the audience um, that I will be asking you. And um, I will be reading from them. And after I read them, I will uh, give you time to answer, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, attorney. Yeah. OK. Um, so drawing from your background with uh, NPC, can you speak to the possible issues when such a large number of buildings are added to our power grid? OK. Now, if you you take a look at Makati, Makati with its uh, bu uh, business centers, huge buildings, the average there is about four to five megawatts per building. The average, the, to the taller ones, the bigger ones could even reach up to 10 megawatts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, take the case of it's MC Bo in the early 90s. The demand, the peak demand of it's MC Bo that time was 8 megawatts. And you know, during the time, the demand also of the entire island of Samar was 8 megawatts. Meaning, what I'm saying is we need to plan together with the power sector. And I am, I'm from the power sector. We are putting up something there which we cannot support. For example, mm. you need you need to build power plants. You cannot do that by solar. There is no wind. You, you cannot put up wind here. The only point in the island of Negros that was identified for potential power level, uh, uh, what you call? Uh, Renewable energy? No, no, the, the wind turbines ah, okay. for, for wind power was, was San Carlos. It was even scratched. Now we, you have Gimaras now running and so forth. You, you have a good put, but not the Magete. Or it, we were trying to see if Mabina could do it or somewhere there in what you call the Bundo Shaton. None. There's none. No studies so, so far. So we should scrap that out from there. It is misleading. They are just trying to pull us. So, meaning, if we want to put up these big businesses there, it needs power because that's the uh, electric power is the. You know, that's the supporting cast. You take out power, you, you get burned out, you get blocked out, there's no industry. So mm. you need to put up additional power plants. And normally these are the rotating plants, like the geothermal, the coal, and so on. And we hate coal. Uh, that's what, what we know. Then how do you how will we support those buildings and so forth in that island? So there was no proper consultation, no proper study. Everything is on top of one. Mm. So um, this this project, uh, which was not um, done in consultation with um, power companies, um, you're saying that um, the needs of the artificial island cannot be supported by the existing output. Is that right? You will have a lot of problems because, you know, it's not only the power plants, but also the transmission lines or the mm -hmm. transmission lines to, towards that island. Whether they put it down as submarine cables or maybe they are putting up bridges there. So, but they need transmission lines there. Again, you'll have a problem of overhead lines. And of course, the supply of, you know, Probably Palinpino Geothermal can still supply, say, for example, 20 or 30 megawatts of that. But you know, every every year the, the load is increasing everywhere. Everywhere. So it needs to be coordinated program with the power sector. So you can be supported when the time comes. 
Okay. So what's the practical of, uh, effect of that, sir? Um, if, for example, the the demand, power demands cannot be met or they will be getting from the same source as mainland Dumaguete, what is the practical effect on the Dumaguetenio? Now, if we are going to run that line there in order to support those islands, for example, so we will suffer because of the lack of power here in Tumagete. We will share the burden of that island or those islands mm -hmm. because there is lack in the, the lack of capacity for transformation capacity of the substations and probably from the, uh, the power plants. No, So we will also suffer. The mainland Tumagete folks will also suffer. They will also suffer. Now, okay. they, they, um, they might put up <laughs> generating sets, but they, they were trying to say that they are putting up uh, renewable energy. So that's uh, the two cannot meet together. Right. Um, I think it was clear in your presentation that the proposal for renewal, renewable energy is either um, baseless because uh, there's uh, Dumaguete is not in the wind energy map or insufficient if uh, they're referring to solar power. Yeah. Um, so I, I have another question here, maybe in relation to this. Um, based on your experience, how much power will um, this artificial island need? Um, a size of 174 hectares. Oh, that, that's quite, the, that's going to be a new city. And for example, if the Magiti is now consuming about 40 megawatts, so, because they are bigger, maybe in the future, that could be just about that 40, 50 megawatts, something like that, or even more. I, you know, it comes by stages anyway. So, the, and the early de uh, develop businesses there before the full development. But you're saying 40, is that four zero? Four zero. Four so zero. Five zero, even more. Wow. Okay. Now, the mayor was saying that power will be supplied by Noreco. Do you think that they can supply the power or would it be better to get directly from the EDC, if ever? Now, it depends on them because, you know, some kind of a policy in the government, which they call, we termed that before as the reconnection. Now they call that as customer transfer, uh, only paying some kind of royalty or willing charges to Noreco or the utility. Uh, it can be done that way, but, you know, uh, number one is where will you get the power? It must be from the power plants. Any of the mm -hmm. power plants, whether from Cebu or Panay and so forth, because we are now interconnected. And then the second issue will be the transmission lines. Now, these are not distribution lines. So it will be big transmission lines. Now, or if they insist that Noriko will uh, uh, supply, supply it to them, well, of course, Noriko maybe can run their 69 and have another you know, receiving trans, uh, substation transformer in their area. But, mm -hmm. you know, programming the delivery of power is not included. There's no study. So uh, that's very dangerous because when the time comes that you need this power, there is none. You cannot just like, you know, you need milk, but there's no store for milk, uh, something like that. So many early consultations would have, would have uh, you know, cure this. I was emphasizing about the feasibility study. The feasibility study, that's why I was wondering how come they come up with 23 billion without a feasibility study? And then I saw in the figures, they been up to the last uh, digit of, say, 0.19 centavo something. That's only attainable by means of, of, of a feasibility study. They could have just said 22 to 24 billion, something like that, or there's no window. Uh, now, we start to doubt how come they, they have the figure without any study. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a common refrain that we've been hearing. Uh, we've been looking for the feasibility studies of this island, but um, sad to say, we don't see any, uh, even for 
the facilities that are proposed to be built. Um, and going to that, uh, I have a question here on the wastewater facilities. Uh, why do you say that the wastewater facilities that will be constructed on the reclaimed islands will not provide for the city of Dumaguete, or at least will not service the city of Dumaguete? Yeah, uh, it's like this. The, the wastewater facility that they're going to put up in the islands will only process the wastewater within the island. So goodbye, Domagete. There's none for Domagete. <clears throat> if they want a wastewater treatment facility now for the people of Domagete, they can do that if they, if they really desire to. Maybe two, one southbound, another here on the north, north side, something like that. Why wait for those islands to come up with wastewater treatment? Meaning we're just made to dream up there, uh, waiting for that island to come down. And then uh, we'll have good wastewater facilities. And that, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Mm. But uh, would it be possible for these facilities um, to service both the uh, artificial island and mainland Dumaguete? I don't know how they're going to do that, but uh, it will be very impractical. For example, from the wastewater produced from the mainland from mainland to Maguete. Are you going to pipe it there to them? I mean mm. we'll have a big, a big uh, you know, just like a water delivery system. So all the waste water in Maguete is piped in, into that island. Do, do they like that? And then process it there. I mean, <laughs> that's something very funny. Mm. Mm. Right. All right, um, I think there is a follow-up to that. Let's see. Yeah, I think it, the, the, the question was, is it possible to build the wastewater facility inland for Dumaguete and the whole district? So instead of um, putting it in the artificial island, we build it inland and your answer was uh, yes, I, I right? Want, yes, yes. We agree to that. We'll be very happy with that. We'll be very right. happy. But uh, please don't let us dream of that island in order to have a wastewater treatment facility. If they want to build it here now, if they can do that, that's very good. Do not wait for that island. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Engineer Fred, uh, a question here. What will happen to the geothermal power source in Negros Oriental if the land to be dumped in the smart city will be sourced from the Cuernos de Negros? I really don't know. <laughs> mm. uh, uh, if they're if they're going to get or source the you know the backfill for those islands from this area of Cuernos de Negros, I don't think they are, they are going to, you know, I, I just really don't know, but uh, we receive information that we will be getting backfill uh, materials as far as Tayasan, which is about 90 kilometers away. Right. Oh. And uh, I even heard the mayor say when he was asked, with the same question, uh, the, the the contractor can get anywhere, uh, even if it comes from China. I heard that. I mean, it's getting funny, getting funny. So I don't know if, how the people will react if you know to fill up a 174 island uh, hectare island with boulders and sand and gravel from from this place. Now. The, They'll have to plan that out. Yes, uh, I think perhaps what's clear is there are more questions than answers. Uh, even until now, it's been two months uh, since the issue had erupted, and I think we're still asking the same questions. Uh, but thank you for trying to uh, take a stab at this, Engineer Fred, and also trying to clarify um, the issues regarding um, our power source, the power sector, and even uh, 
the other issues such as renewable energy. Um, there's there's a question here uh, on solar power and uh, hang on, let me look for it. So there was an article about floating solar power panels. Is this not possible to use uh, in this island? Uh, the, are you familiar with uh, floating solar power panels? Okay. I have seen in Korea uh, floating solar panels, but it was only in a very limited area, somewhere like uh, uh, the, the cooling system, the... the a uh, pan, it's a pan, about one hectare in uh, surface area. But that's too small. And also, this is inland, meaning this is between the sea and the river, something like that. Uh, the, the wastewater from the power plant is discharged to that point and then to, to that pan. And then that pan was covered with solar panels, floating solar panels to generate electricity. In the island here, in our case, it cannot be. It cannot be, why? The weather, the wind, mm -hmm. the, the, the waves, no, it will destroy this thing. It's not practical. It's okay. practical. It, can, it can perhaps be installed in a lake where there is not so much uh, waves. Disturbance. Yes, yeah, because if it keeps on moving and then maybe, Thwarted after a strong wind and so forth. No, that is uh, defeats the purpose. Right. Uh, thank you. I think that's clear. No, uh, to have these floating solar power panels on the sea would be uh, disrupted by the waves that we have there. So uh, that's more yeah. ideal in lakes or ponds where there's not much disturbance. Yeah, you're wasting your investment there. It, it is being damaged by strong, strong waves and strong mm. winds. Okay, um, there's there's a question here. Building a new two by fifty MVA substation plus our old substation. Kaya rin sa Noreco? Can Noreco handle this? Well, probably yes, uh, but they need they need to to uh, what I mean they need to consult the NGCP because NGCP is the one pro providing the mm. the, uh, the input towards Noreco. Now that's that line that sixty nine thousand kilovolts line that sixty nine kV line of the the NGCP is overloaded already with that amount so. That's why we need to program this with these people who are supposed to support the project, your project. So one of them is power, another is water. So things like that. So without prior consultation, without this feasibility this study, everything is, you know, it's not clear where are we going to? And then they're just saying all, all kinds of things without any basis. Right. Um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, to, to answer that question about 2 by 50 MB and so maybe Noriko can do that. No, they can do that. It's just a matter of where to put it and uh, for them to invest on it. But mm. my, my concern is about the supply coming right. from GCP because that 69,000 volts line, uh, that's too overloaded for this 60 or something megawatts being supplied to the south of the Magaiti already. So you need a bigger, you need a bigger uh, transmission system there. And uh, maybe just as a follow-up, um, if, for example, these things are available and Noreco can do it and they get the agreement of NGCP, how long would the project like this take? Okay, no. Uh, it's very easy to put up equipment and facilities, transformers, transmission lines. The only problem that we always have is right away. Mm. Right away, where to put up the lines. It will take years to negotiate. 
some uh, even some NPC uh, NPC projects which were done in the 80s are still unsolved right now. So something oh. like that. So, so the number one problem for these transmission lines construction would be right away, not the manpower, not the technology, mm. not the equipment. Right. And I think uh, right of way is actually one of the reasons given by uh, the mayor in um, proposing this uh, island. I think his uh, reasoning is that he cannot develop inland because it's very difficult to get right of way. And it seems like from what you just said, to be able to power the artificial island, we will still need to confront the same problem, which is getting right of way because you're going to need um, big transmission lines. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. The, the, what Mayor is saying about right of way and what I'm saying about the right of way for transmission lines, that is for the high tension wires, uh, mm -hmm. the ADCP to pass through. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. So forth. Now the Mayor is saying about what he's saying is about the right of way for roads, I think. And uh, what he's saying, what he was trying to explain to us, are there are no more available lands to be developed here uh, at the back of the Maguete, which I don't believe, which I don't believe. Yeah. Now, but if uh, you look at... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, for example, the distance between the foot of the mountain here to the sea, it's far more, you know, lengthy than for Cebu City from Carbon to the back of the Capitol building. Meaning Cebu has, has a very short or a very limited space for expansion. That's why it's, it's very uh, practical for them to, to, to reclaim. Right. Because they have already, they have already uh, optimized the use of inland, inland. Uh, inland uh, areas. You know? So people are already sitting at Beverly Hills and so on. They're already living on top of, of hills and mountains. It's not happening yet here. Okay. So meaning there's still plenty of there's still plenty of lands around the Maguete. Now they say that what's left for agriculture? No, you cannot you cannot compete. You, you have to give that mentality of having the Maguete as an agricultural area. No, you give it to 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 the towns, to the municipalities. I mean, you can, what I mean is, there's still space for development. Now, uh, I just remember that in his first term, he was trying to develop, to transfer the city uh, governance center inward, inward mm. inland, inland, just what like, just what like uh, Tagbilaran is doing something like that. It's still possible here. So to free the traffic here at downtown, the old Domagete and so forth. There is still space, not very, not very big space, but there is still space. Now it's just a matter of, you know, pricing and so forth and convincing the people. And, you know, we could have different thinking on that approach, but generally, even Cebu, Cebu people, my friends there who, who uh, try to look at this to check our reclamation budget. Why do you have? They are asking why do you have to reclaim? When you have plenty of space at the back of the Maguete. Right. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I have a follow up to that, but just to to clarify. So the right of way that um, these transmissions transmission lines will need um, is different. Uh, from what the mayor was uh, referring to, but uh, you still, it, the process still takes long. Yes. Is I, that I correct? Agree. I agree with that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, in relation to, to what you mentioned in Cebu, 
Um, there's a question here. It says there have been many comparisons to uh, of the SRP reclamation and the proposed Dumaguete reclamation. Apart from what you've already said, um, do you have any other comments on on this comparison? Uh, I don't have. I, I don't have uh, comments on that uh, because there's an issue about, you know, uh, licensing, permitting, and so forth, which I cannot answer okay. as far as the SRP or Cebu, the Cebu project is concerned. So I think other authorities will have to, 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 to give, give right. some enlightenment on that. Okay, uh, we have a question here from uh, an electrical engineer. So uh, he says, I share your sentiment on the massive challenges in supplying electric power to the two artificial islands. But the mayor was saying Noreco 2 can supply the needed electric power from NGCP, like you said earlier. Uh, do you think Noreco 2 and NGCP can work together along this line? Yeah, normally in this case, uh, NGCP will just have to boost their capacity and deliver the power to Noriko. And it is now Noriko's, Noriko's job to supply to, that island, to those islands. Meaning those are two separate things, uh, purely because Noriko is on distribution, not transmission. So they will have to take care of that. And they, they, they would always say that we can do that. Mm -hmm. so no, no problem on that because if they say they can do that, go ahead. But my point, Kanina, is uh, what about the on the side of the GCP? Where their lines, this old transmission lines, the sixty-nine thousand volts line, yeah. the sixty-nine kb is too overloaded already. Right. Yeah. We need new oh. lines or bigger lines. Right. Okay, um, there's a question here. How much will it cost to build the 40 to 50 megawatt capacity for the proposed smart city? Do you have any figure that you can um, share? Maybe an estimate? I, I don't have an estimate right now. No. It depends on what scheme are you going to, 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 to follow? No. What type of power plant or what type of trans, uh, transmission lines? Mm -hmm. So basically, transmission lines. You can have some estimates. It's very easy for the for the NGCP people. But for power plants, that will take some time. You know, of uh, getting some uh, some figures to come up with what you what you need. For example. Because right. um, I'm sorry, boring, right. I, I said, are you going to expand your thermal? I don't think so because it's up to the next level already. You're trying to develop the geothermal. That's limited. Uh, we're almost full there in uh, the geothermal. So the, the the next thing is for the power sector to come up with, with the easiest thing that they can do is to come up with coal power plants. Mm. So it's, the uh, environmentalists don't like so forth. So we need more. Now there there are the the behavior of different power plants. You know, for example, uh, if you talk of of solar, you can all, only do nine thirty to three thirty during the daytime. Right. Okay. So what about your nighttime uh, requirements? Something like that. If there is a good wind source, no, that's good because wind will have something like 24 hours service. Although it might not be consistent all the way, but at least during the evening and dawn time, you might be able to, to, to generate. But sad to say that we don't have that capacity or capability right now. Right. So just to clarify earlier, you mentioned the engineer uh, one hectare equals one megawatt for solar power, no? But um, what's available is only 14 to 16 percent. Does that mean that, uh, I mean, for the layman, because uh, I'm also trying to understand, does that mean that from um, one megawatt, well, what's usable is only about 14 to 16 percent of that? That's right. That's right. Okay. When, we are, yeah, when we are talking of one hectare, for example, 
uh, five years ago or six years ago, it was the ratio was one is to two, meaning one megawatt you need two hectares. But right now we have improved the efficiency of the solar panels and equipment. So it's now one to one, one hectare, mm -hmm. one megawatt. Okay, that's good. Okay, but your one hectare can only produce between 9.30 to 3.30 during the daytime, mm -hmm. during a sunny day, good sunny day. No. So sunny what day. I mean is on a 24 hour basis, only about 14 to 16% of the entire day is being supplied by that. Uh, mm, okay. Power. Okay. So that's from 9.30 to 3.30 and then the afternoon. Something like that. On, yeah. on a sunny day. On a on a clear sunny day. Yeah. On a clear sunny day. Okay. All right. And uh, these panels, they can't uh, have reserves, uh, you know, during the times where they cannot uh, harvest or it's dark from 4 p.m. to 9 a.m. Can they not run on reserves? Is, is this feasible even? Not yet. So there's no technology on that yet for the moment. Mm. Uh, the, the only possible way is for uh, for storing up energy is by battery, but that's going to be very, very expensive. No? Okay. So, very expensive. It will drive your cost three to four times. Wow. Uh, that, that's very practical. So, forth. so we wait for a time when there will be some kind of storing energy uh, would be more, you know, more practical in the future. Right, yeah. But scientists are doing the research right now. No. Right. But at the moment, we are being limited to that uh, situation. Okay. All right. That's clear. Thank you for that. Because uh, I think that's important to note that to, to store it, you need uh, additional capital. Uh, you can't. The technology is not available. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read a comment here. Uh, our existing Amlan Dumaguete 69 kV transmission line already reached its capacity. We have to construct additional 69 kV Amlan Dumaguete transmission line to supply the proposed smart city. Uh, okay. Um, regarding the underground cables for the smart city project, can we compare this with other cities in the Philippines, particularly particularly major cities like Manila, Cebu, and Davao? Do they also have wiring poles for connections? Uh, are we the only country whose cities in downtown areas, like the one you presented, um, where is this? Uh, are we the only... Are we the only country whose cities in downtown areas have those hanging wires? Yeah, there are several cities yet, no? The old cities, small cities, even Tabilaran, uh, San Carlos still have that. But uh, we are alarmed by how the Baguette has gone like this now. About 10 years ago, it was only just about the downtown area which has this black spaghetti. Yeah. Now, if you go inland, you go to the barangays, one, two, two kilometers away, this, the, the wire pollution is increasing. So but it's, it's not good to look at and uh, not safe for people. So on. Now, uh, probably, right. I don't know how to, how to remedy that situation. Now, yet. My, my point, Kanina, is why are they including that issue of this overhanging wires with the construction of the, the or the reclamation? Don't get to yeah. remain like that. Yeah. Maybe for the islands, for, for the project to reclamation, they can do that there. No? Very, very, very modern and so forth. No, Very modern. Uh, they have embedded or they have buried lines and so forth for a very a very modern city just like you go to downtown makati or you you go to uh, the, the the what's this bgc 
Mm. It's good. The, the, the standard there is Japanese or American, European. It's very clean. And the wires are there embedded on, in the soil, something like that. But you cannot do that in the Maggete now. Right. If they don't have, it, it takes so much capital, I think, for everybody. So the, the lesson here is that this could have been remedied years back. But you tried to, uh, people just let these uh, utilities do their way. So look at that. That's, that's very, that's very ugly to look at. Yeah, and I think the point that you were trying to make in your uh, refutation is the fact that uh, this is being mentioned, but this is actually not a point okay. to be considered because okay. nothing will be done with the existing wires in mainland Dumaguete and uh, all the plans for these underground uh, cables will be for the artificial islands. All right. That's right. right. That's right. Okay. Um, we have another um, question here. Oh, maybe it's more of a comment, but maybe you can comment on this as well. Uh, he says, unless revoked, Governor Digamo has declared through an executive order banning coal-fired power plants in Negros Oriental. The governor has also declared the province as renewable energy friendly. So for now, coal power plants are out of the question. Correct. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, for technical, you know, for just for a technical discussion, I, in, I included the dimension of a coal power plant uh, supplying power, but that's, that's not, that's not uh, seriously to, uh, allowed here in Tumagete or Negros Oriental. So there's a provincial, there's a provincial uh, law or mm -hmm. resolution to that ordinance. Right. Um, do you have an idea how much it costs to do underground cabling for downtown Dumaguete? Wow. <laughs> At the moment, I, I'm lost. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> so many things. If you dig underground, a lot of work and so forth. I don't know how to how they will do that. No? And mm. All those messy underground water water lines there and so forth. It's going to be a complete overhaul of the city. <laughs> all right. I think maybe that's what uh, we can try to uh, shed light on uh, the amount of work it mm. will take. Uh, it, it will take an overhaul of the city, and it will affect also the businesses. No, because yeah. yeah. It's going to be on the streets. Mm -hmm. So no amount, but the complete overhaul. Would you would you say that this is uh, something that's feasible to even consider? Yeah, uh, it's just a matter of cost, actually, huh? and the willingness of the government to really spend to improve the system. Right. So, for example, Korea. Uh, a Korean friend said, we were very poor after the war. We entered two wars, Second World War and the Korean Peninsula War. We were very poor. Our system was very messy. And so no food and so water and so forth. Mm -hmm. And he looked at the system here in, in uh, the Maggete. He said, it will take some time for you to bury these lines. And you need a lot of money. Yeah. Well, if ever, for example, no, uh, this is uh, this is some this is an option. Who who should shoulder the cost, or who will shoulder the cost of doing that? Is it Noreco and GCP or the city? No, normally for a good city planning, this should have already. I'm, I'm talking of an ideal situation. Mm -hmm. uh, normally in the West, for example, America or Europe, so they have this one big channel or canal, no, okay? And you put there the communications cable, uh, the gas lines, water lines, and uh, your your electricity lines in one package there, uh, alongside the one package in, in, alongside the roads, something like that. So it can be done that way. So mm -hmm. there's a period of really 
That's why I said it's going to be an overhaul. Yeah. For cities like the Maguete. You know? And yeah. then the, 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 really the will, uh, the political will of the leaders to do that. Right. That will, um, yes, please go ahead. Uh, that will happen if uh, we'll have, you know, we'll have some kind of prosperity already. But that, that's really the question. It's a chicken egg uh, discussion. Uh, but I, I'm, I, I had that experience of knowing how they do, did that in, in Korea, including the highways and so forth, something like that. They said, yeah, we were worse than the Philippines before, but we were able to do this because of you know, good leadership. We had mm -hmm. good economy. So, Right. Well, you know, um, Engineer Fred, exactly a month ago, um, the mayor was actually here on the learning event series, and uh, he did relay the difficulties of, I guess, overhauling mainland Dumaguete. And it seems like um, the solution that he had arrived at was the um, island building this 174 hectare island. Uh, so I think now it's a matter of, uh, I guess, the, the fact that there are no feasibility studies and you know the, the many questions that this has raised. I think that uh, instead of uh, maybe addressing the problems, it has maybe caused, you know, like what you said, um, division uh, in terms of opinions, whether or not this is a good idea. But I do think that the islands or the artificial islands might actually be his um, solution or his overhaul, so to speak. Um, yeah. That's why I'm, I, I'm just reminded about what's being posted in the internet or in Facebook regarding some American, you know, guys or maybe European that they are. Uh, in fact, news in the NASA that they will, they will journey to Mars. Uh, you know, they will put man Mars and find out if man will survive there and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then some wise guys would say, "Okay, so let's leave leave the Earth and go go to Mars." So something like that. No? Let's mm -hmm. leave to Magetti and let's go to the artificial island. Something like that. Mm -hmm. But there's still something we can still do things here. And I'm not saying that it's it's hopeless, but it takes a lot of work. So. Yeah. To, have, to, to do a lot of volume of work like that, we need to unite. We need to understand each other. This is your job. This is my job. Something like that. And where will we get the money? Something like that. Uh, don't leave the Maguete in favor of I mean, mm. Something like that. Let's leave the earth and go to Mars. Mm. Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good example. I, 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 I think I've heard the same, especially since there were uh, recent launches, uh, uh, people going to space like Elon Musk, and I think uh, some of them, like Jeff Bezos, have said that you know uh, the Earth has so many problems. Let's go uh, outer space. Um, but uh, I think I like what you said that there is still something that can be done um, in Dumaguete, and I think this is perhaps what um, the citizens are trying to explore. Uh, we we have some questions here um, that relate to uh, garbage, landfill, and uh, perhaps traffic. Uh, I'm going to just read them anyway, and um, feel free to, to comment or um, decline if you feel that uh, you cannot answer these questions. All right. Um, yeah, here, correct me if I am wrong, but what? But from what I have read and learned about the smart city, there is no mention about a sanitary landfill or any type of facility for its trash. Is there a chance they can build something to this effect on the two islands? Mm. Uh, that's very difficult to answer because Naturally, they, they don't want to dump their waste there in the island. They will mm -hmm. put it some put it somewhere. 
the back of the magete or something. So that's really a tricky, tricky issue. No? So nobody can answer that. Only them. What's your plan? So where is your feasibility study? What are the support mm -hmm. services and so forth? And that is what is missing in their in their presentation. Where do we get the real the real data? Right. Are you just right. picking this up from nowhere? Uh, that's the problem. Yeah, I think there, uh, there's a related question. It says that where do you think they will dump their garbage? Our city still has issues regarding garbage disposal. That will be a problem. I, I, I don't think they're going to leave the Mogeti behind because of the garbage problem. And, uh, you know, make good everything in the, in the new islands, something like that. So again, it's a matter of prioritization, prioritization now to prioritize the, the moves of the city government. Now, they are, we are so busy talking about this, this uh, uh, smart islands, smart city, they call it, but we forgot to solve some basic problems here. Garbage, for example, flooding, okay, traffic. Now, right. By the way, in Dumaguete, we don't have traffic, traffic lights. Huh? So, we don't have, we don't have. Uh, that could have is a little bit of the traffic situation. The problem here is you have your your traffic aids. If it if it rains, so then they have to find a way to shelter themselves and mm -hmm. leave the traffic a mess. So when the time that you need the most, they're away. It mm -hmm. happens several times. So. So, mayroon kayong traffic aid, pero pag nag-ulan, wala doon. And so, nag-scramble yung mga sasakyan, something like that. No? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, there's a question that I had uh, when you mentioned um, in your PowerPoint about the retirees and how um, these may be people who live outside uh, of the artificial islands and maybe in the mainland Dumaguete or the neighboring towns. Um, this is connected to the roads, no? Uh, if the geriatric centers are there, do you think that um, the people living in Dumaguete and the neighboring towns will have access uh, in terms of roads? And will this not be now like a bottleneck? Uh, to me, the problem is, uh, can we afford that the health facility? Some mm. people say in Cebu, and a friend in Cebu was still in that very, that's going to be very, uh, very expensive. So for an ordinary retiree and so forth, is just trying to enjoy his time here mm. around the Magete. That is not very, very practical. What you need right. to have, uh, yeah, you know, mga nagmasahe, naghihilo, no, no, something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't know. It can be, it can be accessible only for the rich, and so on, or those people who are living there. As it, uh, I'm talking as if it's already existing. But the point is, uh, that's not to me. It does not look that it is for the Magete, the old Magete. It's for them. For them in those islands. So what I'm saying is, if they have that project to have a geriatric center or the uh, health center here, they can do that here now. They can introduce to the hospitals and so forth, and uh, you know, support these hospitals, something like that. Right. So no, I think no, uh, the... go ahead. Yeah, we don't have to wait for those islands to. Yeah, so, I was gonna say, uh, yeah. you don't need the, the artificial islands for, for this to happen. Okay, um, in connection to um, accessibility, we have a question here. Good evening, engineer. You mentioned that the provision of more open and green spaces for the public to enjoy um, is on the artificial island. So how can there be a possibility that the spaces that would be built from the artificial islands uh, would be accessible to the locals. Like, I guess the, the question here is accessibility. Uh, you did mention that it might be accessible only to those who live there 
or can afford to go there. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you on that score. Yeah, what I'm trying to say, Kanina, is we have many things that can be developed here. At the back of the Pagiti or the neighboring towns, for example, you have Darwin here, which is about 20 or 18 kilometers away. So, uh, what I know is there is an international standard which they follow that for retirees, especially those foreigners who live here, uh, they set a 20, 20 minutes ambulance ride from their home to the nearest hospital, something like that. I think, I don't know if it does still hold. So it doesn't mean that you are going to be always inside the Magete. At the outskirts, for example, Sibulan, uh, Bakong, Darwin, maybe San Jose, something like that. Uh, these areas can be developed. Let's not, uh, let's not focus on the Magete alone. Uh, we need the support of these neighboring towns, Valencia, for example. Now, there's so many good things to see. You know, they praise air there, gardens and so forth. And then you have a lake out there that you can, you can develop as a tourist spot or, you know, camping, whatever you want. Uh, so many places there, here uh, wait for, you know, prospecting, development, and, you know, promoting. So, so that's why right. if, if we wait for those islands to, to grow and then put some green or something there, uh, no, it's not, I, I, I don't really see that as very, very practical. And we yeah. have so many things here to be developed. We already have open and green spaces uh, in Dumaguete and in the surrounding areas. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Engineer Magaliona, what can you say about the marina and the helipad? Lupad Dumaguete did not mention this in their presentation. Do you have any comment? Mm -hmm. The way it looks, uh, that's part of their development. Yeah. Now, I read in the Coconut, Manila, something, that uh, they'll have a good helicopter service for that island. So it shows that it's really for the affluent, the big boys. Really. Mm -hmm. So, marina and so forth. So, that, that's for the, 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 the big boys. Not, that's not for us, the small boys of the Magete. Mm -hmm. Could it be possible that perhaps this is the kind of um, economic growth uh, that the mayor is aiming for, meaning uh, I think it has been said that if you build it, they will come. And so is it possible that he's trying to build certain attractions to draw um, big spenders to the city? Normally, big spenders come because of gambling. That's a fact. That's why Singapore, Singapore lately allowed gambling when it was not allowed in Singapore because they saw that in a nearby island in Indonesia, gamblers go there, even Singaporeans, rich Singaporeans. So that's a big come on, come on, uh, gambling. Mm, okay. All right. Now, um... There is a question here, given all the challenges that you mentioned and more, what is your prognosis about this project? Do you think that the smart city will really materialize? If so, how long do you think the project will be completed? Uh, I stand for no to once before. That's my stand. Mm. To me, it does not provide security or a uh, good economy for the city. Right now, it's impractical for the moment. No, as I emphasized, we need to have a backup industry and manufacturing here in the island in in Negros Orientals to support that. I mean, what shall they be doing there? Just sitting around and then office work that will not create uh, an economy. The economy is manufacturing is whether it is medium or uh, light. Uh, uh, industry that's good enough. And you examine any nation that is that is doing well. 
So it does not, it does not, uh, I know, it does not uh, tell you that because you have big buildings there, that you have a rich economy. No, those big buildings in Makati, elsewhere, that's just a manifestation that you have developed some kind of, of industry supporting those people mm. doing business there or sitting on those, chair, uh, the, those buildings. Right. Yeah. So, parang balik tade. Right, right. No, I, I understand um, what you're saying. I think with your example, you're you're pointing out that um, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a priest now. Yep, James is there. I do apologize. I, I okay. think I was disconnected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 but I was, moment. I was just, yeah, I was just saying that um, what you said about the buildings in Makati um, does not necessarily um, equate to um, a raised quality of life for the people sitting in those chairs, because in the quality of life index for Manila, for example, uh, I think uh, wages are, are about 18,000 um, on average, but to live in the city, is actually mm -hmm. more at 50, 50 to 60,000. So um, you have the resulting problem yeah. of workers living very far from Makati, from BGC. They live in Cavite, right. in Laguna, and all of these places. So uh, thank you for, for pointing that out. Um, now, in relation, in relation to what you mentioned also earlier about industries, I was wondering if you had an opinion on um, the recent shift to remote working. Uh, when you mentioned brain drain, is is the new setup now something that uh, Dumaguete can also explore as a means of uh, bolstering its economy? Because remote work is now made possible. Yeah, remote work, for example, the BPO, for example. Uh, uh, I don't have an exact or a very clear picture of what's going on now in the Maguete. But we used to be pre pre COVID time. We we were, I think that we had more than twenty thousand uh, or something like thirty thousand uh, uh, workers or those BPO agents, something like that. And mm -hmm. why do we have that? Because they are they are, they just just don't sit there, and they are getting paid because they are there. It's because they have clients elsewhere. So what I mean mm. is you need to have the backbone actually of the economy. That's just a manifestation that this, this is doing good because you have agents there and so forth representing. What will these guys do there sitting eight hours a day without a client, something like that. So, I yeah. think the the BPO the BPO sector now is I don't have the figures, but I can observe that it was it is much lower than before. Even if they bring their their work at home, uh, that's that's the uh, reality now. Okay. Well, um, we have a few more here, but these are more of comments uh, that I will read to you. Um, maybe the first one is uh, is a question, what good are sporting venues without considerable investment in local athletes and sports programs? Uh, and I think you, you, you made a good point when you said that Dumaguete is already hosting these um, sporting events and so it is able to do so even without um, the artificial island. 
Uh, I'm going to read two more comments here, sir. Uh, yes, please. 23 billion, uh, 23 billion acquire 200 hectares at 3,000 square meters. Sa Babahuba, build the grand public market with huge parking lot, build the city public hospital. This is, I think, maybe a, a view or a, an option that is being given. Uh, another one is the failures of the city council, the leadership of the mayor to implement his master development plan years back. Babawi niya sa reclamation, it shouldn't be. Right. And on that note, sir, I would like to ask you for your final words this evening. Um, you've, you've really done a great job of going point by point and uh, rebutting the presentation that was given. Um, is there anything else you would like to say to those who are with us this evening? Yeah, thank you very much, Attorney. I'm just trying to say that uh, what we have discussed tonight, wala personal on ito eh. Um, as a Domagitenia, as a citizen, I'm just trying to look at how the future will look like. This is good for my children, my grandchildren in the future, things like that. So we need to make decisions now that, but, you know, make things right. And uh, if we don't have to spend so much for making this work, the system in Domagete, uh, why can't we do it today? Thing like that. Why do we have to spend so much? You're saying that it is free. No, there's no such thing as a free lunch today. No, 23 billion is not free. Uh, you're going to pay, pay it uh, somewhere, somehow, sometime. Uh, I'm trying to, to evade uh, topics on politics. I, I don't want to discuss on that. Mm -hmm. Even on environment, on, on the environment. I'm not an expert on that. No, so, what I have observed in the power sector and the industries, that's what I can probably uh, contribute to the discussion, something like that. What I have observed in my travels and so forth, which could bring, uh, could bring something good for the Right. The point is, let's discuss, let us organize, let us, let us be united. Today, the Maguete is so divided utterly divided yes and no no and yes so that's not good that's not a healthy sign for the Maggette. all right so thank you thank you very much for those closing words engineer fred we thank you for the time that you've taken to um, prepare these points and to share and expound and draw from your experience, years and years, decades of experience in the power sector. Uh, we thank you for highlighting um, what is feasible, what is not, what the roadblocks may be. And we appreciate the time you've given tonight. Thank you for thank joining you, us. Thank you for this. And so there you have it, everyone. Uh, we've heard from engineer Fred Magaliona, and he has uh, commented on the questions. So if you have any remaining questions you weren't able to ask, you can shoot these questions in the Learning Event Series Facebook page. Um, but there you have it. Well, um, personal, and he just wanted to uh, contribute to the discussion drawing from decades of experience in the power sector and trying to piece together um, the feasibility, actually, of the proposals, and especially the 10 points that were presented. So on behalf of the Dumaguete City Host Lions Club and Rotary Club of Dumaguete South, thank you all for joining us again this evening. Um, you will have to remember to stay tuned for our next learning event series. Um, this will be every Tuesday and Thursday this September. And we will have Learning Event Series 12 on September 14. And this will be on growing the Philippine blue economy, policy changes and opportunities. This will be a very, very interesting um, event. We will have Dr. Ronald U. Mendoza Professor and uh, professor and the dean of the Ateneo School 
of government. Um, other learning event series this September will be on coastal integrity and climate change. We have land use and urban planning. Um, on September 23, we have wider implications and, of dredging and island building. And September 28, we have coastal evaluation of marine ecosystems. And so if you would like more information on um, the upcoming events, kindly like our Facebook page, Learning Event Series, and be updated. If you have advanced questions, do send them in. And um, you can also like our YouTube channel for the previous videos of the event series that have passed. So that is all for this evening. Thank you for joining us.